Hello and welcome to yet another webinar by Sensible on how to trade options. A lot of our users did ask us that all this theory is fine, but we want to know really how you trade options and how the trading thought process works and which option to trade at what occasion and what instrument is the most appropriate for every kind of trade, etc. So I thought we'll do a webinar which exactly helps you get inside the mind of a trader who decides what instrument am I going to trade which move with. Also, a big word of thanks to a couple of our users who always insisted that we do this webinar, uh, Mr. Parthasarathy and uh, Russell, this one is for you. The first thing is, what is your market view? You're saying that there are three market views you have, up, down or flat. How simple is that? Right? It's like having a joystick with which you control a monoplane. But when you say up, do you mean a little bit up or do you mean like really break out huge up? And when you said it'll go up, did you mean that it won't go down or did you mean that it'll go up, right? You could be neutral and you could say that it will stay here. Then comes the bearish view, which could basically say it will not go up from here or it could say will go down a bit or a lot. So now we have landed on a PlayStation controller from a joystick. But then before that, you have to understand one fundamental difference, which is extremely important if you are an option trader will go up is not equal to will not go down will go up and will not go down are entirely different things and your choice of instrument you trade with is heavily dependent on how you articulate your view and the second part the corollary of it is of course that will go down is not equal to will not go up right so is that it not really so will go up a lot what do you mean by that in short term or long term will go up a bit in short term or long term will not go down short term or long term so basically the time frame comes into the picture in fact a lot of people make the mistake of having a view without a time frame especially in the context of uh, option trading there is not a view without a time frame and which uh, option you select heavily heavily depends on the view so we have three things so far move quantum of move and the time frame of the move oh yeah so now <laughs> with all that gyan in Option trading has kind of landed us on this. It, now let's think of putting this in a real world scenario. Pick up one side and see how this will pan out. So for this, I'm going to pick up an up move and analyze what all can we do in an up move. In an up move, you can buy futures or you can buy a call, right? In the sense you can either do a naked call buy or you can do a call spread, bull call spread, long call spread, whatever you call it. Or you can sell a put, which is either a move up or a no move down. This is extremely important, no move down. So in case you are betting against a move down, then the option of choice is either naked sell put or sell a put spread. So the first fundamental question which you have, if you are an option trader looking at a screen, with a view of an up move is, should I buy a call versus sell a put, right? I mean, should I buy a call or should I be selling a put? And the answer to that lies in the strength of your view. When you said it will go up, do you mean to say it will go up, go up, or do you mean to say that it won't go down? Let's compare selling a put and buying a call in the following scenarios. So as you can see, the 11,500 call buy loses money anywhere between 11,200 and 11,500. It breaks even at 11,600 and it starts making money at 11,700, 11,800 and 11,900. It makes qu quite a bit of money, right? Whereas the 11,500 put, right, loses uh, actually quite a bit of money at lower levels, that is 11,200, 11,300 and all that not significant which is an important thing for you to understand uh, we'll come to that in a bit but let's look at the profit profile it it won't have the kind of phenomenal profit which 11500 call makes but it makes a steady profit throughout uh, the zone of 11500 to 11900 now here's the important thing for you to understand right a lot of people say that this naked selling business is dangerous right but if you actually look at it at 11,300, which is 200 points down more. Let's say you got it wrong. So let's forget all the black swan event happening and all that, right? In which case you lose quite a bit. Let's look at a reasonable down move, which is 200 points down. In that event, your 11,500 call and the 11,500 put are pretty much making the same loss, 
right? And if your view is slightly wrong, in which it goes to eleven thousand four hundred, in the call buy you are losing quite a bit of money. Whereas in the sell in the sell put, you are actually breaking even at eleven thousand five hundred, which basically means you didn't get it right, but you are also not wrong. The call lost money, the entire premium, but the put still made premium, right? It's very evident from this that making money on put is uh, sell put is more likely and it kind of uh, gives you more flexibility in terms of where you break even i would break even on 11500 sell put at 11400 but for me to break even on 11500 call i have to have a 100 points move in my favor which is at 11600 so even just in terms of break even they are separated by 200 points of course we are talking about an expiry trade a non expiry trade is a slightly uh, better i mean slightly different case we look at it later so if you are trading for expiry you can see that it's much easier to make money on a sell put than a buy call simply because in a buy call you are giving premium and in a sell put or sell any option for that reason you are getting some premium right when does the call do better than the put that is the put is already making 100 rupees anywhere above 11500 right so for your call to outperform a put it has to make 100 rupees and that happens at 11700 you have to be right by 2% right which is not trivial a 2% move is not at all trivial it it can happen but it's not like it's easy to happen so for your buy call to outperform the sell put you actually had to get it right by 200 points right so this slide basically tells you one thing if you're not very scared of tremendous down moves right almost always it's a better idea to sell an option than buy an option simply because the break even happens at a much easier level in buying an option you had to get your view right and right in a major way and right before the time runs out right because you have to get it before right before the expiry whereas if you are selling the option you just have to make sure that you are not terribly wrong right and if time runs out that's actually good for you because you are making the entire premium so if no move happens before that expiry you get the whole damn 100 bucks to you as premium the meta of this obviously is that if you are buying an option time is against you and if you are selling an option time is for you every single day nothing happens in the market you are actually a happier man the hare and the tortoise both have a view that nifty will go to 11800 and both of them know that nifty will not break 11500 so the hare is patient and the tortoise is not really patient in month 1 nifty just stayed where it is the hare lost all his premium and the tortoise made the 100 rupee premium on month 2 it just went to 11550 so hare made a net loss of 50 that is 50 points gain minus 100 point loss tortoise made another 100 point premium again Finally, in the third month, Nifty decided, "Okay, enough of waiting. Let's go to eleven thousand eight hundred." On that occasion, the hare made three hundred minus hundred, which is two hundred bucks net profit, and the tortoise again made a hundred. But then, net after three months, the hare's uh, tally reads around one hundred and fifty rupees, and the tortoise has actually made three hundred. Right? Let's move to buy call versus buy call spread. The call spread is a fairly interesting alternative to a call. it's very simple right you buy a lower call and sell a higher call why do you do that because sometimes buying a call is too expensive so you sell another call and save some premium on that right you also do that because you think there is a limit to the upside so let's say you only thought that nifty is going to 11700 from 11500 why should you pay the whole premium of 11500 option because that premium also takes into account the case where nifty goes to 11900 and 12000 and all that right but you don't really believe in that kind of an upside so why should you pay for the upside which you did not want so you will sell another option let's say ki your view is that it will only go to 11600 so since you are saying it will only go to 11600 you can also sell a 11600 call why because 11600 call is something which says it won't break 11600 and you can pocket that premium So how this will pan out is you will buy eleven thousand five hundred because you think it is going above eleven thousand five hundred, and then you will sell eleven thousand six hundred because you think it is not going to go beyond eleven thousand six hundred, right? So you only pay for the upside which you think exists. 
so you buy the call for 100 rupees you sell the other call for 60 rupees so net net your outlay is only 40 rupees so this is called a long call spread or a bull call spread i mean we don't really believe in this long and bull and short and all that jargon so we just say buy call spread so buy call spread is buy a lower call sell a higher call lower buy gives you the upside the higher sell reduces the cost profit obviously is capped at the second strike because whatever profit you gain from the 11500 buy call will be capped by the 11600 sell call let's go for max loss first max loss is simple right worst case is it will expire below 11500 in which case you lose the entire premium of 40 rupees the max profit is you will make a maximum of 100 rupees which is the difference between 11500 and 11600 but you also end up paying the premium so basically the max profit in a call spread is the strike difference minus the net premium you are paying so in a call anywhere below 11500 you lose the entire premium at 11600 you recover the entire premium and break even and above 11600 is when you start making profit and in case of 11500 11600 spread you paid 40 rupees to enter that so anywhere below 11500 you lose 40 anywhere above 11600 you'll make that uh, 60 rupees max profit and your break even in this case will happen at 11540 which is the net premium of course there is stt effects and all that into it but let's not get into that stuff but then you are kind of unhappy you're like 60 rupees that's kind of sounds less so you want something better something better will happen if there is more profit potential in nifty's up move so you believe that instead of 11600 it is going to go to 11700 so then you do this other trade in which you buy 11,500 call and sell 11,700 call. So you, this time you are gunning for an upside of 200 points instead of 100 points. The max loss is the premium you pay. The max profit is the strike difference minus premium. One important distinction, the 11,600 call was priced at 60 rupees because it's expensive, right? It's a lower strike call. Whereas the 11,700 call comes cheaper for 30 rupees. So your cost of this spread is higher because the second option you sold is cheaper, right? So in this case, you're doing 100 minus 60, 40. In this case, you're doing 100 minus 30, which is 70. So this has a higher potential to profit, but it also costs more, right? That is the trade-off. So 11,500, 11,700 spread is what you enter at a higher cost for a higher upside. I mean, it's the classic no risk, no gain scenario. So anywhere above 11,500, you lose the entire premium, which is 70 rupees. At 11,600, you make 100 points on the spread, right? Because 11,500 call goes in the money and gives you 100 rupees. But then you paid 70 rupees premium that you lose. So you make a net profit of 130. Above 11,700, you hit the max profit where 11,500 has given you 200 points, but anything beyond that is taken away by the 11,700 sell call. So you make 130 rupees above the 11,700 mark. So this tells you that you have a higher profit potential than this one. If this 130 and 100 and all that seemed small to you, let's put actual numbers on it. We are talking about a few thousands per lot. So in case of losses, we are looking at anywhere between seven and five thousand and in case of profits we are talking about 30k 10k and all that kind of numbers so let's just take the focus away from numbers for now because that you can obviously revisit and work out and understand better from a fine print point of view the bigger point to understand is this a naked call gives you a higher profit potential at a higher loss potential and you should do it only when you're dead sure of a huge quick move huge and quick they are both equally important huge because you're paying quite a bit of premium for that thing and you need to recover that premium and make some money on it quick because every day you sit on that call it's going to cost you some theta dk or premium dk or time value dk whatever you call it a call spread is cheaper by 30 to 60 percent depending on how you choose your strikes right it has a lower potential uh, of profit but it is also cheaper and gives you a lower potential for loss. So this one is something which you do when you're sure of an up move, but the upside is limited, right? So then it begs the question, how about doing this thing when you're not too sure? 
the answer to that is simple when you are not too sure you should not be trading <laughs> right so but then the only de- defect with a call spread is that a naked call only costs you premium but this thing the call spread costs you margin on the sell leg now let's do buy call versus sell put analysis right buy a call if you are really sure of a big quick up move which we already talked about right sell a put if you think there is no up move or you think if there is a small up move or you think there is a tiny move which will take a long time right why quick we already discussed it's a whole time value angle and for put if you are sold and if you are sitting on a sold option every day you are making some time value decay so now let's uh, just go a little deeper into this thing uh, which is the puts right so put has a problem you are just selling an option and you are sitting on it and all said and done tomorrow kim jong un or donald trump can wake up and say ki yaar you know what i am going to do this so how do you take a call between selling a put and selling a put spread you do a put spread typically when you think ki there is some kind of risk which can happen which can wipe me out so i don't want to wipe myself out i am going to play it safe and do a put spread so you sell one put and you buy another put for protection a lower put right so so you so you sell a 11500 100 rupees and you buy back a 11400 so that any loss you incur from 11500 is capped at 11400 by the second put you bought the flip side of course is your premium you are playing for is the full 100 rupees for 11500 naked sell but this is comparatively a measly 40 rupees only the problem is this 11500 put naked will bleed money at 11100 or 11200 or 11300 right but if you are doing 11400 11500 spread instead even if market opens at 10000 tomorrow you are only going to lose 60 rupees which is immense peace of mind and this peace of mind gives you great quality decisions when you're trading you're not afraid anymore right and you know dar ke aage jeet hai and all that but then the flip side is you'll only make 40 rupees instead of that 100 rupees which is made on a naked put sell so then the question you have to essentially answer is what exactly do i want and how sure am i uh interesting side question why is the max profit on this thing lower than the max loss i mean who does it right if max profit is level lower than max if max profit is lower than max loss why would you even take this trade i'm going to make you think about it for a little bit uh, figure out why this is it's always the case why do you think max profit is lower than max loss and let's see like i probably try to answer the question at the end of this session to put numbers in absolute terms 11500 11400 p- spread loses a maximum of 4500 and it gains a maximum of only 3000 but the 11500 naked put can cost you 22500 bucks on a 400 point down move just like we did an alternative call spread with a wider strike gap let's look at a put spread with a wider gap you are not really afraid of uh, anything beyond 11400 you are afraid of what if it goes below 11300 so your protection is not something you need at 11400 because you know you can take losses at that point but at 11, below 11300 it's like too much and you want some protection so you end up doing this you sell 11500 and you buy the protection at 11300 so 11300 put is a lower strike put it's more otm and it is going to cost you lower right so net instead of this expensive 11400 put which came at 60 rupees you are buying a 11300 put at half the price which is 30 rupees so net your premium is 70 this time compared to the 40 last time right you are making more premium here and again going back to the whole formula of strike difference minus premium your max loss is going to be 130 rupees here so now let's compare 500 400 versus 500 300 spreads higher max loss higher max profit that is the trade off you are making if you do 11400 500 spread it is less risky lower downside lower upside but at 11500 300 spread you have a higher downside and a higher upside so basically the 500 300 spread is a riskier and a more rewarding spread 
So let's summarize the whole thing which you've been talking about. I mean, in every course which we did in every college throughout our lives, we are always given that last cheat sheet, right? So let me also give you a cheat sheet for this. And the cheat sheet is this. When do you buy a call? You buy a call for a big up move. When do you sell a put? There's no down move. When do you buy a call spread? There is a small up move. And when do you do a put spread? There is no down move. We could even say that buy call spread is a small to medium up move. So now we know the when of it. Big up move, no down move, small to medium up move and no down move. Next comes profit potential. A buy call is unlimited. That's very straightforward. Sell potential is high. It's relatively high. Not too high. But it, it has a lot of premium in it. So it's very juicy. Buy call spread is medium. It has some kind of a upside but not too much. Not as high as a sell put obviously. Nowhere as high as the buy call. But it gives you a reasonable profit potential. And the sell put spread is like very little premium, right? It's low. Usually it's a low premium. So what is the condition for buying a call? So there is such a thing called implied volatility, right? The higher the implied volatility, the higher the price of an option. You typically buy options when implied volatility is low because the price of an option is proportional to the IV. So low IVs make good buys on option. The sell put or the sell option, basically the trade is meant for a high IV scenario. Call spread and put spread, you don't really have to care much for IV simply because you sell a, an option and you buy back an option. So you're kind of uh, what is called Vega neutral. We will discuss Greeks and Vega neutrality and all in a later webinar. But it's important at this stage that you realize that uh, spreads are kind of immune to nuances of IV because there's one bought IV which is compensating one sold IV, right? So it kind of nets off. The max loss potential max loss potential of a buy call is high, right? It's because you lose the entire premium. So sell put is unlimited because you can technically make a lot of losses if market really tanks. Call spread has a very low loss potential. Loss potential is lower than that of a buy call, right? And sell put spread has a fairly high uh, loss potential. It's typically usually greater than that of a call spread buy, right? but it's always lower than the sell puts uh, loss potential. Premium, buy call is very high and you pay the premium, obviously. The sell put is uh, high and you receive the premium, right? Buy call spread has a lower premium compared to, let's say, a buy call and you pay this premium again. And sell put spread, again, your selling option, you receive the premium. So it's low premium, but you receive it, which is, which is nice. The receiving a premium is always better than paying the premium. Right, because if nothing happens, uh, you make money. And we'll take an example in the next slide and talk about break even. So we'll put numbers on it and that will be very clear on it. So the example stock we have for this is State Bank of India. Current price of 300 rupees. There's a call of 300 strike which is trading at 10 rupees. There's a put of 300 strike trading at 10 rupees. There is a call of uh, 310 which is trading at 6 rupees. And there's a put of 290 which is trading at 6 rupees. Now in real life the 290 put will be more like 7 rupees or 8 rupees. But to make things simpler we just went with the 6 rupee figure here. So when do you do this uh, buy call? When there's a big up move? Sell put. When do you do it? When you're sure that it is not going to go below 300. Call spread. You are selling a sp option at 310. So you are kind of saying that you don't need any upside which happens above 310. So if your view is that it is going to go up but not cross 310, this is the ideal instrument. And the sell put spread is you again saying, you're again saying that it is going to stay above 300 and the 290 is for protection, right? Premium of 10 rupees is what you pay for the buy call. The lot size is 3000, so it's 30,000 bucks, right? It's a lot of money. And per, per lot that too. So 10 lots and you know, you could be saying goodbye to a small car. Uh, sell put has a premium of 10 rupees. Again, very high 30,000 rupees you receive, right? Call spread is a net premium of 10 minus 6, which is only 4, uh, only, uh, four rupees. And the sell put spread is a net premium of uh, 4 rupees. Again, you receive. So the profit potential on the 300 call is unlimited. The sell put will give you only the premium, which is 30,000 rupees. It is not bad. It's quite nice, right? 
the buy call spreads maximum profit potential is strike difference minus premium which is 310 minus 300 minus 4 which is 6 rupees 6 into 3000 is 18000 sell puts uh, maximum profit potential is the premium you receive which is basically 10 minus 6 which is equal to 4 4 into 3000 12000 max loss of the buy call is you lose that entire premium 30000 rupees uh, max loss of the sell put is unlimited buy call spread has the maximum loss potential of the premium you have paid which is basically 4 rupees 10 minus 6 into 3000 and sell put spread has a maximum loss potential of strike difference minus premium which is in, the, in this case 6 into 3000 18000 now let's do break even break even is an important concept you break even when you have recovered the entire premium so in the case of call you will need a stock movement till 310 so above 310 is when you make money in case of sell put you just have a cushion of 10 rupees so even if the stock goes to 290 you lose 10 rupees on the option but you'll get the premium of 10 rupees so anywhere above 290 at expiry you're making money so break even comes very easy at a, at a very comfortable level so in case of call you needed a 10 rupee up move in your favor in case of a sell put you just needed to make sure that you are not wrong by more than 10 rupees right so for an up move a 290 is an easier target than a 310 now buy call spread you have to recover the premium of 4 rupees which basically means 304 plus is your break even and the sell put spread gives you a break even at 296 plus so this is very important right you can see what you are trading off here you're making a trade-off between how much premium you get or pay how much max loss and max profit you're playing for and what is the break-even number at which you are making money so it's basically a the, 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 the your choice of what option to trade is a function of how you're going to look at the odds on this what is my risk reward what is my probability of profit and break-even so the chance of uh, making money on the buy call was fairly low because you needed a 3% up move in your favor whereas the sell put you just needed something less than a 3% move against you which is always easier than a 3% move for you right and between this buy call and sell put the difference is a full 20 rupees which is roughly 6.5% right so you are comfortably ahead when you are selling the put in terms of break even now look at the buy call spread it is going to make money only above 304 so it's not as bad as a uh, buy call but it's not as great as sell put either and look at sell put spread sell put spread is again way better than a buy call spread in terms of its break even but not so great in terms of profit potential right because you can see the 12000 18000 comparison over there you are just trading off profit potential against probability of profit so give this slide a little bit more attention because if you understand this slide you basically understand the entire meta of options trading there is nothing more in choosing your instrument beyond this slide so i had a friend who used to say that everything in life is an unholy trinity you could choose two out of three things in life the third thing in the unholy trinity comes very rare his classic example was uh, the job you pick right there are three things in, your, in the job you pick it's uh, legal fun and pays you well you can pick two out of these three but <laughs> you can't pick the third one so if it's legal and fun it can't pay you if it's legal and pays you it can't be fun if it's fun and pays you well can't be legal entirely right so so the equivalent unholy trinity of options trading is basically max profit max loss and chance of profit you can choose two but not the three in fact i would even say combine this uh, max loss and max profit and make it risk reward ratio you can't simultaneously have a great risk reward ratio and a high chance of profit you're trading of chance of profit for risk reward ratio for there are 14 kinds of market views you have to be sure of direction or the lack thereof and you have to be sure of time frame which instrument you choose is either a futures buy option 
or a sell option and in buying and selling there is a naked or a spread choice but then let's do that as home homework right i mean if i were to explain everything here none of us will think independently and figure out what happens in a down move so i'm just going to leave that as a homework assignment of sorts so i i hope this webinar was useful for you and it gives you the basic idea of how to get inside a option trading scenario and figure out what is the right instrument to trade and all that i guess you had fun with this and i hope you make money using some of the concepts you learned here because if we don't do that what's the point in knowing all this academic jazz right all right so i will see you in the next webinar thank you so much for joining us